Hello there and welcome to another Total War Warhammer 2 campaign tactic. This is going to be a fairly simple one, but it's one that saved my ass many a time. It's quite simply resisting the urge to spend all your money. And hey, this even works great as real life advice as well. So let's get on with it. So here we have my small order of lawmasters empire. Now money wise early game we're doing okay we've got about seven grand in the bank a fair chunk of change and about 2300 income so money wise we're fairly comfortable now when i look around my empire i can see lots of settlements that need to be upgraded now if you're a new player you may see these and think gosh i need to upgrade these quick time so i'm going to go ahead and do them all straight away as soon as they appear i now have no money though 245 measly gold because i got all these new buildings now, while this is all well and good and we do need to upgrade our buildings, we have nothing left money-wise to protect us. If something comes out of the woodwork and tries to kill us, we have no way to defend against it other than what we've already got. So let's say a big old Skaven army comes from down here, because there's probably Skaven in this ruined settlement here. What can I do if they're going to come and try and take out this settlement? I've got a small army here, but there's not a lot there. Now your natural reaction is to go, shit, there's enemies coming, I better recruit some troops. But oh wait, I've spent all my money on buildings, now I can't recruit any troops, I'm gonna die. So, because you spent all your money on those buildings that you didn't necessarily need just yet, because you've left yourself short and vulnerable, and have no emergency funds. And that is really the key here, saving up some emergency funds. Because while we will inevitably need these building upgrades, do we need them right now? If we take a look at this one, this is a public order upgrade I can get and a little bit of income, but do I really need that public order increase right now? If I upgrade this building, it'll give me one extra public order, most notably. Now, do I really need that in this area? If we look at the public order, no we don't. We're getting plus two anyway. It's not desperate that we need that upgrade. It can wait until we've got some spare money to do it. What about some of these buildings? Do I need this? This will give me more trade money. Is that an urgent requirement? No, not really. Another public order gain here. Do we need that? No, we're pretty much fine in the public order. It's going up. And here in our port settlement, this could be a useful upgrade. This will give me 200 extra income. So that should probably be the one that I prioritize to do next when we've got some spare money because it's going to be immediately helpful. The sooner you can take money upgrades, the better, of course. So the tactic, if you can call it that here, excuse the storm ruining my footage, by the way, the tactic is to have some savings. I normally try to save up 10 grand. And once I've hit that, that's when I have money. So at the moment when looking at my funds, I have 2,536 gold. That's all I've got. Don't have 10,000, just got 2,000. So I can spend that on whatever I want. I can spend it on my useful building upgrades. I could spend that on some extra troops. Whatever I want to spend it on, it's free to do what I want with. The 10 grand is there if I need it in an emergency. And now with my income per turn, I can start to save up more to get these extra building upgrades. All with the safety of knowing that if someone suddenly declares war on me and starts sending an army at me, I've got some money there to protect myself if I need it. So it's all about just getting a safety buffer of money in case something terrible happens and comes along. There may be an in-world event that'll cost you a lot of money. You may need to pay someone to keep them from going to war with you because you really can't handle it right now. There's many situations where that money could be useful. And if 10 grand is too much, maybe your income per turn isn't that high yet, well, just go for five grand. Get a five grand buffer and don't spend anything until you've got over five grand. Whatever number it is, it's entirely up to you, of course. I personally try to aim for 10 grand before I spend any money, normally. Another example here, here's a Dark Elf campaign. I've got 13 grand in the bank, so I've hit my 10 grand savings amount. So I've got three grand to spend, and I've got a whole lot of upgrading I can do in this area, as you can see. So I can start spending my money to upgrade these things, and I don't have to worry about spending money that I don't have, or that I'm going to be short of money, or if I suddenly need an emergency fund for something, I've got it. So again, don't feel the need to upgrade all your buildings as soon as you're able to. Look at which buildings are going to be useful to upgrade now, or which ones can wait until later. The game often prompts you and reminds you that you've got settlements that can be upgraded before you take your next turn, but don't let those pressure you into spending money that you don't need to yet. You're in control of the campaign, remember. You're making the decisions, don't let the game make them for you, because guess what? You're not really in control if you don't have any money. Now, as I mentioned, this is incredibly useful for raising an army when you see an enemy coming for you. So let's say this army here was in trouble and this was a huge winter tooth army. It's not very big. It's not actually going to be able to take us out. But let's say it's huge or it's just definitely going to take us out unless we get more troops. 
So we can use our safety Watchman buffer General. to just buy as many troops as we want, try and recruit them before they arrive, or even better with regiments of renown because we can recruit them instantly, we can increase the size of our army and increase our chances of survival. And of course this works with lizard men, blessed units or empire elector counts troops. Obviously in this campaign I have a lot of money because this is pretty much at the end of a Belthazar Gelt campaign, so you know, imagine that I've got less money, but that safety buffer has given me the money to get these extra troops, which could potentially save my ass. So make sure you save yourself up some money. If there's an army nearby that looks a bit shifty, you could buy the defense building. You could raise a small army to help defend it. You could use it to pay money to your allies to get them to help you in a fight. You could try to pay off your enemies. There's so many uses that that 10 grand, five grand, whatever could have. It could also keep you afloat if you go into negative income. So, again, I reiterate, save your money, both in-game and in real life, because emergencies will occur in both. As an example, I was driving down the motorway last year at about 80 miles an hour. I ran over something on the motorway. There was some debris had fallen off a truck or something like that. I ran over it at 80 miles an hour, cracked my alloy wheel, ruined my tire. Bam, there's 700 pounds I needed to spend. Not fun, but luckily I had some savings to keep it covered. I didn't want to go through insurance because I didn't want to lose my no claims. Anyway, you don't care about this. What am I talking about? Don't know why I've come up on this. Anyway, don't spend all your money. Get a safety buffer in Total War because it can save your freaking ass. So there you go. A simple and obvious one to some, but if you're new to Total War, you may just think that spending all your money is the way to go. But I assure you, an emergency fund will get you out of many a jam. So save your money and spend it wisely. Remember, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I will see you in the future.